Hello, I'm Doug Edwards, Director of the Psychiatry and Behavioral Health Learning Network. And today I'm joined by Dr. Rakesh Jan, Clinical Professor of Psychiatry at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center School of Medicine to discuss key research findings around psychedelic therapies and what you as a practicing clinician should know about this emerging treatment option. Dr. Jan is a globally renowned educator in psychiatry and co-investigator of the Psychedelics and Wellness Study, also known as PAUSE, and is on the steering committee of the SANA Symposium. Welcome, Dr. Jan. We're delighted that you could join us today. That is a real pleasure to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to my and a lot of my colleagues' hearts. So I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. So tell us, uh, Dr. Jan, in a nutshell, this is a rapidly growing area. We're seeing a lot of headlines, not only in the clinical literature, but also online from public uh, and, and just mainstream news sources. What should clinical professionals know about this emerging therapeutic area of psychedelics? Doug, you're right. It's a blossoming area of interest for the public at large. In fact, it seems to have caught the attention of everybody I talk to. And the clinical world, Doug, is not far behind. We are very interested in psychedelic research, and I will describe to you why. So first things first, the current state of affairs with the therapies we're offering our patients are simply not adequate in addressing the needs of the majority of our patients, particularly in mood disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, to name just two. So when the psychedelic research, which is actually the modern phase of it is quite new, came out of Johns Hopkins and Imperial College, it was a revelation, Doug. It showed us there's a completely different way to do things. Instead of avoiding symptoms, we actually are provoking during psychedelic therapy some of these difficult emotions. And instead of treating someone on a daily basis to numb their symptoms of depression or anxiety, we're allowing for them to actually heal. That's a complete paradigm shift. And every time paradigm shift happens in psychiatry and the effect sizes are as large as they are, Doug, you can imagine why we have become so excited and interested in psychedelic research and practice. You know, this area is, is as you said, it's, it's also relatively new. It's emerging very fast. Where should clinicians be focusing their attention right now as, as so many different studies and research and ideas and, and different methods of teaching start to emerge? Psychedelic research and practice is interestingly both extraordinarily old and relatively new. In fact, there's evidence emerging that psychedelic therapies as offered by shamans and healers may actually predate the birth of Christ by hundreds of years in multiple cultures around the world. So the first psychiatric treatments may actually have been psychedelics. Hmm. That is emerging very rapidly from very different centers of archeology span and findings from across the world. But psychedelic research did have its heyday in the Western world in the 1950s and 60s, but because of the cultural pushback in the 70s, the war on drugs, psychedelics, even though they're not reinforcing and not abusable, nor is anyone interested in abusing them, they got caught in this storm and they were also pushed away. And it wasn't until the 90s, 1990s, that it reemerged after a 30 or 40 year hiatus. And since then, Doug, it's been a true blossoming. So where should clinicians focus? I think they should focus on the most recent phase two and phase three data emerging from psilocybin in major depression. I think they should also focus on post-traumatic stress disorder and there's already a legally available medication, ketamine, 
that is now being utilized as both a psychedelic and non-psychedelic therapy for major depression and PTSD. I've actually published some on that. So where should they go? I think they should do two things. They should perhaps consider reading up on the literature, stay connected. And of course, our SANA symposium is going to be a wonderful way for them to get all their education and peer-to-peer -peer connections in one single place. And speaking of um, the broader psychiatric community, as well as the connections you just referenced, what I also find interesting about this growing area of psychedelics is it's starting to break down, I think, some of the silos that we have in behavioral health as well, whereas there's psychiatry over here and psych psychotherapists here and addiction over there. What do you see in terms of a more integrative approach as psychedelics uh, come online for uh, different mental health and potentially addiction disorders. You stated it very well. Psychedelics clearly have broken down these barriers, these artificial barriers that have existed in the various specialties in mental health. For example, my teachers, my teachers over the last decade in terms of psychedelic education and research have been a combination of psychiatrists, emergency room doctors who have a great deal of experience with it, psychologists, and some who actually are not degreed, but are extremely aware and familiar with psychedelic therapies. There are no silos as far as I am concerned. Everybody's going to bring something to the table. We have something to teach each other other on this particular topic. And perhaps that's the reason why, Doug, in the SANA Symposium approach that we are taking, we're not taking a hierarchical approach. This is not a MD or a PhD or a therapist or social worker or counselor kind of carving out their own spaces. We will all come together because psychedelic medicine, the way it will be practiced, I think as early as within a year or two, is going to require for all of us to bring our strengths to the table, whether we are prescribers or not prescribers, and our backgrounds are not going to be as important as our knowledge and passion will be. Oh, that's quite fascinating. And Dr. Jan, I'd like to thank you for spending just a few minutes with us today. And ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Jan referenced, I hope you can join him and myself at to learn more about the latest in psychiatric research and treatment strategies for mental health and addiction professionals at the inaugural SANA Symposium. It'll be a virtual event taking place September 17th through the 18th, 2021. And it's from the same team that brings you Psych Congress, the Evolution of Psychotherapy, and the National Conferences on Addiction Disorders. Be sure to visit sanasymposium.com to learn more and to register.